React server actions are a way to let you ditch the traditional, dusty, boring way of writing your APIs like it's the 1980s and instead let you write your API code right above the component that actually uses it. They're a great tool if you know how to use them, but they're also kind of like a rake that's waiting to be stepped on. So let's investigate. Are server actions that bad? You and me together, let's see. And hopefully after this video, we're not the ones getting hacked. The security risk of React server components, a post on the Node.js security blog. This got my attention through a post from Sasha on X who shared how they have adopted React server components more regularly and only by a margin of luck figured out that they originally wrote a React component code that would have resulted in a security breach if not refactored in time to fix the issue. So that sounds pretty harsh, like a security breach. What does that even mean, right? Let's take a look at the tweet here. I just realized I was planting a colossal security breach into my React server components. This is the first time I've used them extensively and I do didn't fully realize that I can't trust arguments. Now in the code example here, there's a lot going on. We're gonna take a look at a much nicer implementation here in a second, but the gist of it is, right? They have a user ID inside of a server side component, bind it to a certain server action that is then passed as the action to a form, essentially deleting a user with the action defined right here. And at first glance, to be honest, that seems pretty reasonable, right? You have a form, you ask the user, are you sure you want to delete this team member? And if they are, then you delete that user's ID, right? That seems pretty reasonable. But the problem is you can actually get hacked. So a software developer at Netflix mentioned they got hacked due to the same React server components pattern that we just saw and that I'm going to show you here in more detail in just a second. What do you think is the security risk here? And as it turns out, even when posting this on Twitter, a lot of people actually missed what the main problem here was. They thought it was about client-side input validation or even CSRF, which is a form of request forgery. And actually, none of it is really the problem. So dude, to just understand what the problem is, let's take a look at a very, very simple example. A React server action, what it comes down to is this. We define an asynchronous function like delete user, and this actually has to be asynchronous no matter if you do anything asynchronous in it or not. And we can mark it with use server to make sure this only runs on the server as a React server action. And then we can log anything inside of here. And as long as we now pass this action, the delete user into a form as the action property, just like so, we're already good to go. Once we now click the button, this action is going to get triggered and we should see a hello from server action logged in or server console. And we should see that once we click this button, perfect, we can see the hello from server action right here. Now, one thing that's pretty cool about server actions is that you don't have to define them in the same file as you use them, right? We can completely get rid of the form and just define our server action in a different file entirely, like the actions.ts here. And as long as we now import the function we define in there, like the delete user function and invoke it from our component, we can even mark this as a client side component, right? This now runs on the client and calls a function actions.ts, the delete user function that is defined on the server. So as long as we log something in the console and open up our console, we should see the exact same behavior once we press the submit button, right here, we can see the hello from action. Perfect. But dude, at the same time, this is also where the security breach really starts. So let's say we had a function in our component. We can define it anywhere. It doesn't really matter called get user ID. And all this does in a real world setting, we're going to mock it right now, is return the ID of the current user. Basically, every auth library, every auth approach has something like this to get the current user ID that's logged into your app, right? Perfect. Really good. So now in our component, we can grab the user ID by just invoking the get user ID function like so, right? That's going to be our string, the currently logged in user. And now let's offer our user the option to delete their own account by passing in the user ID to our server action. And of course, in order for that to work, we also need to receive the user ID inside of our server action, just like so. And just for simplicity, let's just log this instead of actually interacting with a database, deleting user, and then the user ID that's passed into our server action. Let's save that. And once we now click the submit button, we expect a log that is deleting user, uh, current user, right? Great. Great. And as we now click the submit button, we can see deleting user, current user, perfect. So each user can now delete their own account. And just like that, we have implemented a massive, a big security breach into our application because essentially what can happen now is anyone can delete any user. That's it. Now, why? Why is that possible? You're wondering, right? This is the current user ID that we're passing into this function. The user can't change that. 
right? And there's a fantastic write-up, let me kind of go into full screen here, um, on this exact topic from one of the makers of Next.js named Sebastian. And that's right here. The use server annotation that we use to define a server action exposes an endpoint that makes all exported functions invocable by the client, which is exactly what we want to let a user delete their account, right? The identifier for that server action is currently a hash of the source code location. And here's the thing, right? Here's the important thing. As long as a user gets the handle to the ID of an action, it can invoke it with any arguments. The bottom line is, as long as the user can figure out somehow the ID of this action, the delete user that Next.js automatically assigns it under the hood, anyone can delete any account. And now you might think, okay, well, that seems like an issue, but they can't really get the ID, right? Wrong. It's really, really easy to get the ID of a server action. So check this out. I'm going to open the network tab here. And once we perform a server action by clicking it, we got the ID, right? It's as easy as that. We can go to the request that was made because server actions are just post requests to the same page that they're defined on, right? This is to localhost 3000. And right here, we can see in plain text, next action, and then the ID, which is a hash of the file path that the action is defined in, right? So in this case, the F888 something something, that's the action ID. And now deleting any user is as easy as grabbing the entire request as is. We're kind of mocking the same request, pasting it in any HTTP client. So in my case, that's going to be Postman and changing the user ID to your user ID and then send that off to localhost. And as you can see, wow, the request went through in 12 milliseconds with a status of 200 OK. And if we now look at our console, deleting user, your user ID. So I just deleted your account with this kind of server action implementation. It's not just the user ID that you pass in here, but this is just an API endpoint, right? So the, the real problem that we talked about earlier, the problem is not client-side input validation. The problem is not a request forgery issue. It's authorization, right? No logic checks who is authorized to delete which user in or server action. And now you might say, well, Josh, but that's really obvious, right? That's just a regular API endpoint, just an abstraction on top of it. And yes, to some users it might be, but my point is it's so awfully convenient to omit that really, really important part to just write your server actions exactly like this. That's what I did in my own app, man. And trusting that how you call your server action with that user ID is how they're going to be invoked by the client. But that's not the truth. The truth is anyone can pass any data to your API. So the issue really comes down to a broken access control. If the user ID is not properly authorized as we didn't do it, right? We just let the request through. An attacker could potentially delete any team member by guessing the user ID value. Even worse, if you're using something like Postgres, which uses automatically incrementing integers by default, an attacker could potentially enumerate all the team members. So just starting at one and counting up and deleting every single team member in the database. And I want to make it very clear, like this is not a Next.js specific issue, not a server action issue. Essentially, they just let you write your API and the authorization part is always and has always been all responsibility as developers, right? So the question becomes, how do we protect ourselves against such a security breach? And dude, you could put stuff in a closure and that's going to encrypt your props but that's not really secure that's more like security by obscurity the recommended approach to handling user input in a react server component is to treat any variable passed to it as hostile input to validate sanitize and authorize the input before using it in any server side code and one thing i found very interesting is that this behavior doesn't actually differ between development and production so you can just as easily crack a deployed endpoint than you can with locally right if we go to the network tab in this deployed version then we can simply do the same thing we can grab all the request headers paste them into our postman and we can now pass any body like uh, your user ID. And now we can delete your user ID in production by just hitting send, right? We're getting the successful server response with a status of 200. Okay. And when pulling up the logs, we can see even in the deployed version, it's the exact same thing. I can delete your user account. You can delete mine. It's horrible. This seems like such a basic thing, man. Authorization, but it's so easy to overlook. Like I actually did this mistake in my own app. I thought, yeah, I'm going to worry about that later. And bam, it's in production, right? It's it's really easy to mess up, even though it sounds so basic. But I think if you write a traditional API route, it's much more in your head, at least it was in mine, to do proper authorization than it is in server actions, where it's very easy to believe that functions will always be called as you do it in your app. But no, they're just any other API endpoint and anyone can call them with any data. So as long as you watch out for proper authorization, server actions can be a really neat tool 
that let you iterate your app really, really fast because they're type safe. You can define them right in the code. They're really convenient. So that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video and the article. I'm going to see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.